Hey, what's up? I am Guilherme Heck Cardoso. I am a software developer from Brazil. And today I want to show you the Tiny Renderer Programming Challenge. This is a computer graphics programming challenge for beginners. And it's a lot of fun, so maybe I can motivate you to take this challenge as well. And I want to talk a little bit about uh, the steps you have to take and my own implementation. So let's go. First of all, kudos to the author of this challenge. I am not the author, so I'll leave a link on the description to the original GitHub repository. So, the rules of the challenge. Starting from a function that sets the color of a pixel on the screen, implement a renderer capable of rendering a 3D object with its texture and basic lighting. So, yep, I know this sounds a little bit terrifying, because you only have access to a set pixel method that sets the color of a given XY position on your display and you will have to implement all the rest by yourself but the tutorial is actually really nice it, it has some really nice steps it's very easy to follow along it's much easier to follow than dark from netflix for example so let's get started first of all we need to set up a basic project and for that i decided to go with python and conda because it's so easy for me to just uh, list all the dependencies that I need and say ok Conda go ahead download and install all of these dependencies so I can start working as soon as possible and then I created this application class that is responsible for creating a GLFW window and initializing I'm GUI. I'm GUI is a library that I'm using for the user interface but you actually don't need any user interface at all. If you prefer, you can just write your image file to your hard disk, for example. Then I created this tiny render editor that is responsible for the user interface. And here in tiny render is the core of my implementation. This is where the business logic is. Next, Next uh, we need to uh, draw the wireframe. And for that, we need to understand how to parse the 3D object. And we need to understand the 3D object file. And here's the file. It starts with this big list of vertices that, that is represented by lines that starts uh, that start with the letter V. Then here is a list of texture coordinates. Then there's a list of normals. And finally, there's a list of faces where each face is actually a triangle and it has three vertices, three no uh, texture coordinates and three normals meaning that this would be the 24 vertex on the list of vertices this would be the first texture coordinate on the list of texture coordinates and this would be the 24th normal on the list of normals and the same goes to these other two vertices you just need to watch out here because these indexes are one based and uh, they start they start in one and your lists probably start on a zero index so i had to subtract one uh, from each one of these indexes and uh, there's another gacha here that you have to multiply the z values by minus 1 because they are uh, inverted on this model, at least at this model that I used. Now we need a decent line drawing algorithm and at this moment you can ask yourself can I just draw all the pixels between two points and yes you can but you will end up with a thick line. Uh, for example this line barely touches this pixel and it barely touches this pixel and this one so we shouldn't draw all of these pixels. And in order to solve that, there is the Brezenhan's line drawing algorithm. You can search on Wikipedia for the algorithm, so I don't overextend the video. But what, what it does is that it has a tolerance for these cases, and so that it avoids drawing all pixels. And we end up with much better lines, much uh, cleaner lines, and we al already have a nice result here we finally see our 3d model so what's next next is the triangle rasterization rasterization is the process of determining whether or not you need to draw a pixel whether or not you need to fill it with color so we have this list of faces where each face is a triangle composed by three vertices 
And the first thing I did for this part was to define the bounding box of the triangle. And it's very easy to find uh, to define the bounding box because you just need to define the minimum x and the maximum x, the minimum y and the maximum y. Okay? And then uh, after that you can just iterate over this as if it was a 2D array, a two-dimensional array, as we always did for any other 2D array. And for each position, we just need to ask ourselves, uh, is this part of the triangle? If it is, I need to draw it, otherwise I can just skip it, okay? And at this moment, the tutorial uh, suggested using barycentric coordinates, if I remember correctly. But I decided to do something different. I decided to go and ask myself, uh, is this point to the left of all the three edges? If it is, it's part of the triangle and I need to draw it, otherwise I can skip it. And as we can see, uh, it is to the left of each, of each one of the edges. But how can I tell if it is to the left or to the right of it is part of the edge? And for that, a quick search on Stack Overflow was enough to find out the answer. We just need to compute the determinant of vectors AB, AM, where M is the point that we are analyzing. And if the result of the determinant uh, is positive, it means that it is to one side of the edge. Uh, if it's negative, it's on the other side of the edge. And if it's zero, the, and this is very important, it is standing on the edge. I have to confess that somehow I for forgot completely about the zero. Uh, so what I did was I draw all the inner pixels of the triangle and then I called my line drawing algorithm uh, three times in order to draw the outline. And this was actually a very crucial mistake that I did and I need you to remember because I'll get back to this mistake later on. So after this we can uh, iterate over all triangles and give uh, each of them a random color and this is the result. We, we have uh, nice triangles, nice color triangles uh, but we still need to compute some kind of light in order to understand a little bit better wh what's happening in this 3D model. It's very easy to compute the light intensity uh, for the whole triangle instead of going pixel by pixel. You just need to compute the scalar product between two vectors, one of them being the light source and the other one being the normal of the surface. Because uh, the dot product is uh, pr proportional to the angle between these two vectors. If the vectors are collinear, the dot product is 1. Meaning that if the light points directly towards the surface, then the intensity will be 1. And as the vectors become closer to orthogonal, their dot product becomes closer to 0. Okay? And by computing that, we get this result, with, which looks really cool, except by the fact that now the 3D model looks like an origami figure and there is something completely wrong going on here on these pixels. And what's going on here is that we are not computing Z values at all, we are not computing the depth, that's why we are drawing these triangles in front uh, of his mouth. And fixing that is very easy, we just need to implement the Z buffer. The Z buffer is a very simple algorithm. For each pixel that you, that you are drawing, you just need to ask yourself, did I draw any other pixel that is closer to the camera than this one? If the answer is yes, then I should skip this pixel, otherwise I need to draw it. And after implementing the Z buffer, we understand that these pixels are closer to the camera than these other pixels, okay? And that fixes our problem. Next, we need a smoother lighting algorithm and we also need to apply texture to our model. So how can I do that? At this moment I thought, well maybe I could just apply the texture color of each vertex and then interpolate to get a smoother lighting. And this is what happened. <laughs> As you can see here, there's something clearly wrong with the wireframe. And what's going on is, the, is that thing that I mentioned before. Uh, on the beginning of the video when I said that that I was calling my line drawing algorithm in order to draw just the outline of each triangle and that probably ca caused some interpolation issues here and besides that uh, since I'm only uh, getting the color of each uh, vertex instead of the whole triangle 
there are some strange uh, effects going on here. So I started by removing the outline drawing of the triangles and this is what happened. So back to thinking, how can I improve that? How can I improve the interpolation? So first of all, we all know that I should get the proper color of each pixel instead of just getting the color of each vertex, right? And I should also uh, compute the proper normal of each pixel instead of using the same normal to the whole triangle. And that should fix the, the light, okay? So I decided to go back to the barycentric coordinates and with the barycentric coordinates we can define uh, these uh, weights, I called weights, as they, they are the influence that each vertex has over a point inside the triangle, a point that is part of the triangle. So I can say that this point is composed by 60% of this point, 13% of this point and 27% of this point. And we can use this information, these weights, to compute several things. For example, we can determine if this point is part of the triangle just by looking at these weights. And if these weights are equal to or greater than zero, then this point is part of the triangle and I need to draw it. Uh, I can also compute the texture coordinate because the 3D model only gives me texture coordinates of these uh, three vertices. So I need to interpolate in order to, co uh, to get the correct texture coordinate. And I also need to interpolate uh, between the three normals in order to get the, the final normal here. So let me show you a little bit about how I did that. I started by creating the bounding box, as I said on the beginning of the video. Then I can just iterate over all the points inside the bounding box. And I create a 2D point. Then I compute the barycentric weights relative uh, to this point um, and the three vertices of the uh, triangle. Then as I just said, if all the weights are equal to zero or greater to zero, then it is part of the triangle, right? Then I need to compute the, the Z value. And here is what I did. I just apply these weights. I just need to multiply and sum all of them in order to get the final result. Then I find the Z value of this point. And with the Z value, I can compute the distance from this point to the camera position. And if this distance is greater than a distance that, that is inside the Z buffer, then I should skip this pixel, right? Otherwise, I, uh, I update the Z buffer and then I need to render this pixel. And in order to render it, I need to find uh, the final texture coordinate. And I did that just by applying the barycentric weights again. And then I get the final color. Let me just show you. Uh, this is the texture of this object. And a UV is actually a XY position in this texture. And since I have uh, three vertices and we have texture coordinates for each of these three vertices, I just need to uh, apply the barycentric weight in order to find the final UV position, right? Then I have this uh, method that gets the color of a given XY position here on this image. Then I do the, sa the same thing for the normal. I get the, the three normals and then I just apply the barycentric weight in order to find the final normal. And then the light intensity is simply the dot product between the light direction and the final normal. Then the final color is uh, the color that comes from the texture times the light intensity. And tada! The result is very slow, almost 14 seconds in order to render the model. Uh, this is because all, all of these computations are done on the CPU instead of the GPU. That's why it is so slow. I can also render uh, the model with flat texture and it took uh, 12 seconds in order to, to render that. And I also implemented some uh, different rendering modes like wireframe, random colors, Texturize that I just showed you. Light only. And I also have uh, all the combinations for the smooth lighting.
So what would be the next logical step for this project? I would say that it would be to use NumPy in order to improve performance. If you search on Google for how to improve numeric code performance with NumPy, you'll find out a ton of talks and are different articles about it. So I decided to implement my own geometric functions just in order to review some geometry concepts, but other than that, I should definitely go with NumPy. What else? I should also uh, maybe try some different lighting algorithms, maybe play a little bit with diff different light colors, different light sources, and the original tutorial also suggests as the next step implementing a perspective camera so that we could play a little bit with the transform matrix, uh, with scale, rotation and everything else. So that's it for this video, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, consider subscribing to this channel as I may or may not upload more coding videos and more guitar playthroughs as well. So yeah, that's it. See you soon. Bye bye.